Gold stocks have been destroyed. The selling has been fierce and relentless and nearly every goldie has been smashed. But this presents us with an unbelievable opportunity to buy some quality goldies at extremely discounted prices. So can we take advantage of this extreme volatility in the gold sector? I'm Biko Konstantinos and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Please give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Together we can stay up to date on the markets and potentially find amazing investment opportunities. Now let's see what's going down. Investing in gold stocks is not for the faint hearted. They can often range between extremely overbought to extremely oversold. I think we're in the latter category for many stocks at the moment. Check out these charts of some of Australia's most well known gold mining stocks. Newcrest is trading right down in the low 20s. Evolution Mining has dropped all the way down to the low 3s and has now recently gapped down lower on misproduction guidance. Silver Lake is trading around 130 after previously being quite strong. And Remelius is also looking extremely weak, trading all the way down to the $1 level. Silver Lake and Remelius were some of the leaders during the post-COVID boom for gold stocks. You can see how Silver Lake rallied all the way up to about 275 and Remelius rallied all the way up to around 250. But since then, sentiment for gold stocks has been languishing. And just recently, the selling has gone into overdrive. It seems like every gold stock is being thrown out with the bathwater. But extreme volatility can often create great opportunities. Now you might think that the gold price is crashing as the reason why stocks are being destroyed. However, that's not the case at all. The US dollar gold price is holding up quite strongly above 1800 and the Australian dollar gold price is even stronger, trading around 2600 which is close to the all time highs near 2900. So the gold price is actually very strong and allows producers to sell their gold at good prices. One thing that has gone up is cost. So across the globe, costs are rising, which is being passed on to mining companies. So nearly all mining companies are facing increased costs to produce. But does that account for the extreme selling we've been seeing across Australian goldies? Personally, I don't think so. From my experience, the gold sector is extremely sentiment driven. And when sentiment's bad, it can just get sold down very quick. Check out this divergence between the Australian dollar gold price and the XGD, which is the All Ordinaries Gold Index. From this point, there's been a complete and utter divergence. So I can't see how increased costs accounts for that bigger drop. And I also don't believe that Aussie gold stocks have all just gone to crap at the same time. So does this present an opportunity? And how can we capitalize? In my opinion, demand for all things gold is going to ramp up over the next several years. The long term chart for the US dollar gold price looks amazing in my opinion. Since 2002, we've seen this beautiful upwards movement in the gold price with some parabolic moves in between. We've got this major resistance around the 2000 level which is just begging to be broken in my opinion. We've also got this decade long cup and handle pattern which will be completed on an upwards breakout above this resistance level. And the fact that the price has held up close to this resistance level around the 2000 mark provides me with more confidence that we will see an upwards breakout over the next months or years. And once we do see a genuine breakout above this level, we could easily see a large move similar to this one. Now if you combine this with the current fundamentals in the global economy, for example soaring inflation, aggressive interest rate hikes, potential of a recession, Ukraine invasion and geopolitical tensions and sanctions, then the environment is ripe for a return to the ultimate safe haven, which is gold in my opinion. So sentiment looks terrible for gold stocks at the moment, but this has the potential to reverse in an instant. So how do we capitalize if that does eventuate? Where you can buy physical gold or the gold price, gold ETFs over a basket of stocks, or individual stocks. And today I'm going to look at individual Australian gold stocks. My strategy when it comes to buying gold stocks is to first look for the stocks with the strongest chart patterns 
because that indicates to me that there's strong buying demand. And then I'll check the fundamentals and do some research on the company just so I feel confident of the long-term prospects for that company. So if I'm happy with both the chart and the fundamentals, I'll look to try and add positions when there's periods of volatility causing the share price to drop even though the fundamentals remain strong. So you're hoping to pick them up on a discount like we potentially have now. Now these stocks I'm going to go through are just the ones that I follow. There is a lot more Australian goldies that I don't follow that could be great buys. So it's not exhaustive, it's just the ones that I know about. Also, I'm not recommending anyone to buy as I'd never do that. As we've seen with the volatility, there's some massive risks in gold stocks and that should always be considered. And full disclosure, I do own some of these gold stocks. Stock one is West African Resources. Since early 2019, West African Resources has made a beautiful uptrend and is currently trading around 120, which is actually very close to the all time high around 145. This chart shows me that West African has very strong buying demand. Although it's fallen a bit, it hasn't been sold off at all. For that reason, I feel like West African will continue to outperform and should see new all-time highs in the near future. West African Resources is focused on creating shareholder value through acquisition, exploration and development of gold projects in West Africa. Their first gold mine was in Sambrado Gold Operation in Burkina Faso in March 2020. They've since expanded their operations by acquiring 90% of the 6.8 million ounce Kiaka Gold Project in Burkina Faso. West African aims to be a 400,000 ounce per annum gold producer by 2025. Stock 2 Perseus Mining. Perseus is displaying a beautiful uptrend from 2019, which has hit this uptrend line a number of times before pushing upwards again. To me, this chart is a thing of beauty. Perseus has three gold mines in the West African region, and gold production is on track to reach more than 500,000 ounces per annum in 2022. Now there's something about the gold deposits in those West African regions that's allowing companies like West African Resources and Perseus Mining to generate huge profit margins because of the high grade of gold and their ability to keep expenses low. Stock 3 is X64 Gold. Now this stock doesn't have as much buyer demand as West African and Perseus, but it's one of those stocks that could have great potential. The chart's not currently in an uptrend, but it is holding its ground and it hasn't been utterly destroyed like a lot of other goldies. So that's one positive. X64 was formerly called Medusa Mining and recently changed its name. The other thing I like about this chart is the potential of this resistance level around $1 to be broken in the future. Because it's been hit so many times, a genuine upwards breakout could result in significant buying demand coming into X64. So when I see a chart like this, I'd look into the fundamentals and do my research. And if I thought there was strong potential of an upwards breakout, I'd potentially buy here. But if I wanted to play it a bit more safer, I'd wait for a full breakout above this resistance level. 1064 has a long-term profitable mine in the Philippines and is looking for growth opportunities in the Philippines and in Australia. Although 1064 doesn't have any super sexy growth at the moment, I'm attracted to it for the potential that maybe it's been ignored and maybe it's not at its true value. They're profitable. They last reported cash of about 76 million US and they only have 207 million shares on offer which gives them a market capitalization of around about 150 million. Now I was going to talk about some other stocks but when I checked out their charts they were just too woeful. So that's the three Aussie goldies I'm presenting today. Do you own any of those? I'd love to hear your thoughts on which Aussie goldies you think would be the best buy at the moment. And full disclosure, I actually own all three of those gold stocks. For gold stock owners, it's been a super wild ride, but at least it hasn't been as bad as crypto. But the good thing is, things could turn around super quick, and I've got a feeling that the new gold rush could be just around the corner. Yes, it's risky, but volatility creates opportunity. Whatever you're investing in, I wish you all the very best. I'm Biko Constantinos, and I'll catch you in my next video. Hey.